Good morning. Uh, as many of you know, I'm quite a keen railway enthusiast, and um, uh, over many years I've um, actually done uh, transport lobbying work. Indeed, uh, some of my uh, concepts were adopted um, by the railway system in, in Queensland, and uh, in, I worked closely in uh, New South Wales uh, with uh, my trade union at the time to have a, a, a series of uh, uh, ideas accepted. So I can't take full credit for those, but at least I worked on them. But um, there are so many things that I feel uh, could be done or even should be done in relation to uh, um, transport and um, railway systems and so forth. But right now I'm just going to outline some concepts that um, I suppose uh, ought to be raised, and I have I have done so with uh, uh, the editor of a uh, major railway magazine, which is uh, the Railway Digest magazine. Uh, my concept has been brushed aside, let's say, but I'm not offended or upset or anything. I'm just simply putting it on the record that uh, um, there's going to be a centenary of the opening of the Trans-Australia Railway in uh, uh, 2017. So by royal standards, it was quite late. So it opened in 1917. And at that time, uh, the state of Western Australia was quite isolated from the rest of the country. And they built that to standard gauge from um, Port Augusta in South Australia to Kalgoorlie in Western Australia, uh, which of course, uh, in both cases, uh, they met the existing rail system. Anyway, uh, most of the rolling stock uh, in use on the Trans-Australian Railway, which is now by the, operated by the Great Southern Railway, uh, operating the Indian Pacific, the GAN and the Overland, uh, is all uh, 1960s, so it's considerably old as it, as it is now, but uh, uh, what is required for any centenary um, uh, train would be rolling stock uh, much older. And uh, I have in mind uh, a fabulous old uh, uh, end observation parlour car that uh, uh, exists in Victoria and was built, I think, around the year 1900, so it's quite suitable. <clears throat> and that car is called the Yarra, and you can look that up on. Google Images, and you get some nice photos of that. Um, uh, as I say, it's a fine example of co coach building of the period. It's on broad gauge at the present time, but I've suggested that they could uh, bogey exchange it to, to standard gauge. And I was told that it cost money, but it, it wouldn't because you'd only have to jack up the car, as was done uh, many years ago with freight cars, and um, it would just roll out the broad gauge bogey and roll underneath the uh, standard gauge bogey. So surely there'd be some standard gauge bogeys available for that car. Um, that plus the uh, what are known as joint stock Victorian Railways and South Australian Railways uh, sleeping cars from that 1920s period. And they still exist. So a, a number of those type of cars, including the uh, the Murray Dining Car, for example, and other suitable vehicles could be put together with some uh, reasonably older um, Australian national cars, which would, uh, of course, have operated on that uh, Trans-Australian Railway. But if they still exist, it may well be that they've been scrapped. Uh, in any case, uh, I believe that this should become a, a major national event. In other words, the linking of the East and West in Australia is... Uh, as important uh, as it was in the United States, within, uh, and they built, opened up the, uh, the Union Pacific and the, and the uh, Southern Pacific, in other words, the Central Pacific link across through the uh, United States uh, in 1869, and also, of course, across Canada, uh, which has two major cross uh, country routes. But uh, that was considered a national uh, achievement at the time, as I'm sure it was in Australia with the opening of the Trans-Australian Railway, but uh, it's to a somewhat lesser degree because uh, 
of our break of gauge uh, problems that we've had in this country for many years. Um, and of course, as I say, that particular line did um, link with existing broad gauge and narrow gauge uh, lines at either end. However, uh, it could be turned into a national event, and as I said, uh, with the operation of a car like the Yarra, uh, it would be quite representative of uh, the type of carriage that operated on the opening day services. In fact, uh, I've seen uh, old, um, well, 1920s <clears throat> black and white film uh, uh, of the uh, observation car, the lounge car that used to operate on that Trans-Australian Railway, and it's quite like the uh, Yarra car. And of course, that could be made quite clear at the time that it's not actually the wrong stock that was used on the line, but it was very uh, similar in design and age and would be extremely well appreciated by the by the, the public. Uh, the uh, rail enthusiast community would enjoy uh, travelling on that type of car. In fact, that exact car, let's say, um, on a trip across Australia, indeed, uh, the car and, and its uh, contemporary uh, wooden-bodied sleeping cars could operate all the way to, Dar to Darwin and do a national tour, in a sense, uh, to come back through Adelaide and Melbourne and Sydney and end up in Brisbane. So um, there's no doubt that something could be done about it. And I also feel that at, at the time, if they operate a, uh, a recreation of the trans from uh, Port Augusta to Kalgoorlie, there should be a rail enthusiast tour from Kalgoorlie down to Esperance and up to Leonora, which are both now on uh, standard gauge and were indeed both uh, narrow gauge lines in the past. So. Uh, it's still quite some years off. It's like about six years off. But uh, given the fact that uh, it takes some time to actually organise these things, I put the ideas out there. And now, whether that encourages them to actually do it or whether, in effect, if they want to get nasty about it and say, oh, no, we couldn't do that because that guy came up with the idea, I think that, of course, that would be a bit ridiculous. So... Uh, uh, I feel that the idea is worthy of their consideration and I have pursued that a little bit but uh, I just want to see where it goes from here. So anyway, that's just one of the things I'd like to see done along with uh, a number of other concepts that I've got which I will outline on another video. So uh, thank you for viewing.